So this loophole is part of something called the 510K pathway, and researchers have found that it has led to a family tree of medical devices that could potentially harm patients. From IV tools in the hospital to a thermometer at home, the FDA began regulating medical devices in the 70s. Today, there's thousands upon thousands of medical devices registered to the FDA. But in 2022, the number of recall devices were the highest in the past two years. That's according to an industry report from Sedgwick. Were there issues upstream in the regulatory process that we could have fixed and maybe have prevented an unsafe device from being let on the market? Harvard MD candidate Kajal Kadakia explains for the FDA is okay, devices must prove they're safe and that they work, but something called the 510K pathway allows devices to skip that proof of safety step essentially, if they can point to something called a predicate, a device that the FDA previously greenlit. The concerning part of that loophole, even if that predicate was recalled, it can still count. There's a really prominent case actually related to transvaginal meshes that led to the harming of thousands of women. And it was um, authorized by the FDA using sort of a recalled predicate, as one might call it. Um, so in this case, a rotten apple led to a bad apple, too. Kadaki and a team scraped through FDA records, checking the most concerning class one recalls, where the device could cause serious adverse health consequences or death. From 2017 to 2021, of the 510K authorized devices with that most serious recall, they found nearly half used a predicate that was recalled for safety. And it didn't stop there. And then we found out even one more surprising thing. That device, which had been authorized based on a flawed device and had ultimately been recalled, was often being used as a device to authorize the next generation of a device. Cardiovascular, anesthesiology, and general hospital devices were the most common in their research. Also included 16 life support devices and 11 implantable devices. We had devices like infusion pumps, which are these automated devices that they use in the hospital to control the delivery of IV fluids and medications to patients. We had devices that were implantable, like artificial shoulders. So how concerned should someone be? What does this mean for you watching the patient? While class one recalls are generally rare, when they do happen, Kadakia says they can still have a big impact. Their research found one device recall would consist of about 10,000 units. So you can imagine, even if there are only 30 such class one recalls every year, the numbers can really pile up. And the biggest thing is that this is something that could have been a preventable risk factor. So that's the problem. What's the fix? The issue here lies with Congress, actually, because the way the FDA must evaluate medical devices is written in law. Lindsay Thies, Scripps News, San Francisco.